Good morning to all and good afternoon. Uh, we are Dr. Luis Cuadrado Canals and Dr. Luis Cuadrado Vicente. And we're here to present you the, the workflow with Dion Abbey for full arch, basically, and for the guided surgery. They do. So thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to share with you this, uh, this hour with the work uh, we are doing in I2, E2, E2, E2 Implantologia in Madrid. We are a clinic in Madrid devoted mainly to implants. And it's a pleasure for me to share my present the presentation with Luis. Uh, I think we are going to learn a lot of this presentation. And uh, he is the responsible of guided surgery in our clinic. So he's doing, he's doing and making a very good job with Dion Abbey. <clears throat> and we will see some of your cases later, no? At the end of the presentation, yeah, I, I think. I think we prepared three cases for this presentation. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the presentation. Um, okay, this is the... Uh, I think this is the, the main uh, objective of Dio Navy, is to uh, provide the patient with the same day temporary prosthesis based on guided surgery. Um, so you will receive the implants after the correct planning, you will receive the implants, the abutments, the temporary prosthesis and jigs, the guides, and everything uh, to have uh, your patients same day with the temporary uh, prosthesis. So I think, Luis, uh, we are um, um, one of the main aspects of DIO is the, the behavior of the implant surface and the design of the implants. So that will be the, the main object of the, of the workflow with the Navi. We have to talk about the medial loading. The medial loading is now a, a fully accepted treatment and on the basis of everything is by the patient with the same day in temporary prosthesis. So the concept has changed from maybe be able to the concept be able and now it's uh, completely acceptable with same Sussex rate as, a, as the conventional uh, workflow and conventional implant planning. So keeping all the um, elements uh, involved in the immediate loading treatment, treatment, you can have uh, a very nice results. So when talking about immediate loading, we have to consider some things uh, from, from our point of view is the, the design of the implant on the macro, the surface and, and, and micro, aspects, the design of the, of the screws, the design of the, if it is tapered or not, self-tapered, and of course, the surface of the implant. Also, when you are making the surgery, you have to consider the distance between the implants, the parallelisms, the, uh, if you have to make some kind of under prep, the insertion torque and the ISQ levels are the most important. So all those uh, factors, uh, also with the, the intraoral scanner you are using, the design software your lab is using and the temporary prosthesis are the key elements to be successful, uh, to, to get success when you are uh, treating this, this kind of patients. Passive, passive fit, of course, is the most important thing with the temporary prosthesis and also the concept to go flapless. And uh, if you are going flapless with your immediate loading cases, with the immediate loading cases, the best uh, approach should be uh, guided surgery. Okay, so uh, uh, in in our clinic we are doing two different uh, workflows. One is conventional surgery, taking digital impression with the Trios intraoral scanner. Then using CAT CAM, we will get same day temporary prosthesis, and then we are making the final temp prosthesis to be copied on the final restoration. So this is a conventional non-guided non surgery. We, we use special protocols to get uh, all these things done. And uh, of course, the other way is to go digital planning with the guided surgery. We are going to take the files, then make the planning, and then obtain the guide, the, temp the guided prosthetics, and uh, to, to reach to the same point, which is the temporary prosthesis to be provided for, by the, to the patient uh, same day and then going to the final. So two different approaches. One is conventional, the other one is guided. The question is how DIO has evolved the concept of guided surgery uh, for our patients with the same day temporary prosthesis. That should be two different approaches. Uh, I will say that most of the times you can uh, use mixed uh, workflows. I mean, you can uh, 
place the implants and then place the temporary prosthesis or scan to get the same, the, the, the same results. So basically, um, something really good that DIO has is that they have the UV active uh, surface, right? So this affects the, the OST integration, it makes it faster. And we'll see later on uh, other benefits of the of the UB treatment of these implants, right? Uh, here in Europe, we only have the UF2 for UB implants. We still uh, don't have the UF, which is the one that's a little bit more self taping, but I'm sure we'll get it soon. And of course, uh, this surface helps a lot to accelerate the speed of the OS2 integration. Also, it makes the experience for the patients much better as the inflammation of the surrounding bone area on the post-surgery uh, days <laughs> is way better. This basically what it does is that it improves the wettability of the blood into the implant. So it makes it a uh, much more hydrophilic and that way uh, you can see later on in a video that we made for, for demo how the wettability of the implant improves after this activation. I think it's very important because uh, uh, with, with EU uh, uh, preparation, you can improve the surface of your implants, looking for those nanoparticles and with ability of more hydrophilic surfaces that will improve your, your results and get a fast and most stable integration. Right? Yeah, because when, when you don't have the UV active, the implant has exposure to air, uh, which makes the organic material to attach into the surface of the implants, and this makes the aging of the implant surface, uh, which can disturb the OS2 integration, right? After doing the UV radiation, uh, all of these organic materials are removed. There is a high blood wettability, and this makes and results in a fast and stable OS2 integration. Yeah, I think this is very, very important. So basically here you have a, a quick slide where you can see the difference between hydrophobic surface and hydrophilic surface. A hydrophilic surface makes the surface bigger, right, of the implant. So this uh, will always have an impact on how your implant is going to react when it gets into the bone because, as you know, the larger and the more surface you have in contact with the bone, uh, the better stability and the better long-term um, success you're gonna have, right? So uh, UV active implants were designed, uh, now we use it for all patients, but they were basically designed for patients that had uh, compromised cases, like patients we had failure with implants before, or patients we have uh, not so much of a good bone, they have like soft bone, uh, really not the bone we would like to have in implant surgery. And these implants help you to, even in these cases, get a high rate success and be able to, to treat them in a predictable way. Yeah, those patients with medical conditions, no? It's very yeah. important. Diabetes, smokers, and you get a better result. And for me, I don't know what you think, but most important, one of the most important things is the, that you are doing chair side, the activation of your implants at yeah, the, exactly. the last minute. Exactly, the difference with other brands that they have, for example, they have the SLA active, uh, here, the main advantage for me is that you do it right in the intraoperatorial protocol, right? Uh, when you finish the drilling for an implant, you do the UV treatment of the implant you're going to place and directly after checking out of the UV activator, you place the implant into the socket you just drilled. So this makes it uh, much more easy, much more fast and for me the success in this type of things are, are way better. Yeah, let's say it's a last minute activation. Yeah, no? last minute I think activation. you prepare a video we are going to show you. Yeah. I you made so. this, 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 okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, also you, you don't only have to, well, you don't only have, no, you, you can also do the UV treatment for the abutments you're going to place. Uh, the main objective of this is to make the fibroblast around the gum of the abutment active so that way they're going to attach into your abutment way better, right? The concept in implant surgery was always that the bone was the most important thing. Uh, of course, we still consider that the bone is a really important matter in implant surgery, but nowadays we get more and more the knowledge that the gum around the, around the implant is what gives you the long-term success with the implant, right? 
Because if you have a good gum uh, with a lot of connective tissue really attached into your abutments and into your implant, the amount of perimplant eatings that you're going to get is going to be way less than if you have a mobile mucosa or a mobile gum that doesn't let the implant be really protected by this. So bacteria can attach into the surface and start creating a perimplantitis. So here you have the video I made as a demonstration to see how the UB works. Basically, this was should be when you finish drilling, get the implant, put it on the on the UB activator. It takes 20 seconds to, to do the activation. Once you take the implant out of the UB activator, you can tell uh, that the implant has been really heated because the that device is hot when you get it right. Then you place it into your implant uh, transportation and you put it in the in the implant socket you just drilled. Here we did it with a comparison no? with a comparison between one that wasn't activated and one that's activated. You can see the one on the left that's the one activated as soon as it touches the water. The great wettability it has is really hydrophilic, so it's gonna absorb all the water. In this case, in the case of a regular implant surgery, it's gonna absorb all the blood. This will make the coagulum much more stable, and of course, all the benefits we just mentioned, right? That's amazing. Amazing. And for me, it's important. Chair side, no? Yeah, that's chair side, exactly. So basically, the DNA kids, uh, they have a lot of kids, right? The first time you see all the kids, you might think it's a, it's a really hard surgery to learn. But at the end of the day, to have so many kids, it gives you a lot of opportunities to place an implant in a lot of different situations. And you can do a lot of uh, under prep or correct prep when you have hard bone. You can do a lot of things. And for me, it's not a disadvantage to have a, such a, let's say, complex system for guided surgery. It's really an advantage. It only takes you one or two surgeries to learn all of the system perfectly, right? So this is basically the DNAV Master Kit. Here is what you're going to use in every surgery you do when you're placing regular uh, DNAV implants, right? These drills are thought to go with an offset of nine. As you will learn more, more uh, after, uh, Dio has different offsets, which also is a really good thing because you can have different possibilities to place implants. It has offset 9, 10.5, and 12. Uh, this kit is basically thought to go with an offset 9 because when you go with an offset 9, you will only need to select the exact bear that you're gonna use as the length of the implant. So for example, if you're gonna use a 10 millimeter implant with an offset nine, you will get the 10 millimeter drill. Other way, if you're gonna use an offset 10.5 for a 10 millimeter implant, then you will need the drill of 11.5. And if you're gonna use a 10 millimeter implant in an offset 12, you will go with the 13, right? With the 13 millimeter bird. As you can see on the, on the left corner, you have the drilling tubes for the two millimeters, right? This is a really good thing that Dio has because it makes really precise the, the start of the drilling, which as we know in, in guided surgery, this, the drilling start, it's what gives you the precision all along the, the treatment. So if the first drilling is in the correct position, then the next drills are gonna go exactly onto the place. Another good thing I wanna talk to you about these bears is that these bears they have a really good cutting edge, uh, which means you can have them on 100 RPM in your, in your implant machine. You can turn it down to 100 RPM and it still is going to cut through hard bone and it's going to be really good. So this way the bone heat during surgery is reduced and everything is way better, right? Because as we know in guided surgery, you really don't get the irrigation inside the burrs because because uh, the sleeve of the guided surgery is the same diameter as the sleeve that these birds have on the upper part, so the irrigation is not gonna really go in. So it's a good thing that you have a possibility to turn down the RPMs with these birds and also do some irrigation between, Bernard, between two birds after drilling, right? 
this is another another kit you're nearly gonna use in every surgery. Uh, things I wanna tell you about this this kit is that here you have the 50 millimeter burst. So for example, when you're gonna place a 30 millimeter implant with an offset 12, you will need these burst because if not, you won't be able to do it. As you saw on the master kit, the burst only go up to 30 millimeters. So if you wanna get a 30 millimeter implant with an offset 12, which in some cases you will need, for example, anterior lower cases, or even not in full arch, but in single units, you will need to have a, a higher offset so that the sleeve doesn't contact the interproximal uh, teeth. So this is a thing I wanted, I wanted to mention that the 50 millimeter burst helps you along a lot of surgeries. In the special kit, you have the anchor system, you have long and short pins, right? And then another good thing they have is the guide fix. The guide fix is basically a, real, a screw that goes into the connection of the implant and it goes into the platform of the sleeve, which makes the guide really contact the implant. So, for example, when you're not going to use guide pins, this will help you to get your, your guide really stable after mm -hmm. doing the, the implant surgery, right? Do you have a narrow kit? For example, when you want to place narrow implants, cases of lower lower incisors or whatever, you will need maybe narrower implants for, for thin bone. As well, this gives you another possibility to work on another type of patient, right? So it's what I told you before. They have so many kits that it doesn't make it hard. It makes it easier to work with any type of patient or in any type of situation, right? The Onavi White Kit, for me this kit is basic, right, it's really, really good. You can do a sinus elevation on the posterior area with the implants, you know, you will have the, you will have to use thicker implants, right, wider implants. So this gives you a possibility to place implants of 5.5, of 6, even up to 7 millimeters, I think, so it's really good. It works the same way as the other kits, but you can have wider implants placed into your into your surgery, right? The Onavi Flapless Crystal Sinus Kit. This is a really good kit. As you can see, you have the depth gouge and the bone condenser. Basically, uh, the only thing you need to do, they give you that on the planning as you will see later on. Uh, but basically what you need to, ca uh, to calculate is the height of bone and gum. Add one millimeter for the bone condenser when you're gonna condense the bone to this height and place your your instrument one millimeter more than this measurement. Then you have the deep gouge. For this one, you will need to add two millimeters. In this way, you can um, put the bone all around the area where you wanna do the the sinus elevation. This elevation works with a membrane lifter with liquid with saline which also gives you a lot of control not to break the membrane. As you know, this is a really critical point on, on sinus elevation. So for me, it works really good. The drills they have also are really good. You can see that they have 17, 18 and 19 drills. They are really automatic. So even if you get inside the sinus and you touch a little bit the membrane, you're not going to perforate the membrane because they're really automatic birds. So it's really nice, it's a good system. Uh, it's a system based to use half of it with the guide that it's placed and the other half without the guide, right? Here basically you can see on the left, the sleeves, the different type of sleeves you have for regular, narrow or wide implants. Basically the ones we, we normally use are the regular but if you, as I told you, if you have a special case where you need to place narrow or wide implants, you will have those leaves. And those leaves are selected directed by Dio when they do the planning. Uh, of course, you need to, to approve the planning, but uh, you, it's not a hassle for you because they're going to select that for you and you're going to be the one that says everything's okay, right? You have there the different offsets, offset 9, 10.5 and 12 for the regular implants. Offsets of white are different and offsets for narrow are different, but as I told you, and you will see later on, they'll send you everything. So this is really, a, let's say it's an easy guided surgery, which is really friendly for any surgeon, right? So important consideration, 
is that you should try uh, on the planning not to have more than 10 degree divergence between implants. Uh, of course, we're going to use different apartments. You can use the, the special multi-unit apartment that Dio has designed for, for full arch, which they are also with some inclination. They can have different angulation or they can be straight. But of course, you will need to try and leave all your implants less than 10 degrees divergence. Uh, this is basically considered because the cone Morse uh, connection of this implant is 11 degrees. So anything more than that is going to create some forces on the implants that are not going to be really adequate. But with 10 degrees, you will have, uh, you can be completely calm that everything is going to be really good, right? Basically, you have a, re a little photo there of how the drilling tube works, right? For maximum accuracy. This drilling is really accurate thanks to these tubes that you placed at the start of the drilling with the two millimeter bear. There are really long tubes that can go even inside the, the gum of the, of the patient. This, of course, helps you have really little divergence between what you plant and where the implant is going to be placed at the end of the surgery, right? So basically, uh, to do a DNAVI surgery, uh, you need to have some files. What, what information does DO need to do or plan your surgeries, right? So they need a surface scan which is a trio intraoral scanning, or in other cases, you can do extraorally, as we will see later on. You also need to have a CBCT, of course, in DICOM, and you need to have pictures of your patient, extraoral and intraoral pictures, right? This is for the design of the prosthesis, of the provisional, basically. So uh, these are the files you need to, to record before sending anything to DIO. I want to mention here that it's really important to help Dio do the planning and also to make your, your surgery way more precise to do a really good surface scan, right? We all know how to take pictures, but we don't all know how to do a really good uh, trio intraoral or extraoral scanning, right? I think this would be the most important point because this is what gives you at the end the precision, right? They're going to design the guide based on the intraoral scanning or the extra scanning of the complete denture or whatever, or the wax denture. So for me, it's really important that you do it really good and you take your time on this step, right? Also for the CBCT, as you know, uh, it's really important to, sep uh, to separate the lip from the gum. So you don't have a, you don't have a, the, the, the lip are not together. So there is no possibility of error for Dio to differ where the gum and where the lip is, etc. So after you send all the files, uh, you share and discuss the planning with the DO planners. Once you approve them, you receive the package uh, from DO. And now I think we prepared a video of the unboxing uh, of how you received a full large box, right? And what's inside the full large box. This is the unboxing video from Dio. Good morning, I am Dr. Luis Cuadrado. We are in Implantología, Madrid. I'm going to present you So that's the box, no? You receive on the, on the, in your clinic. That's the box you receive for everything. I think the most important point is the possibility of the ability to discuss your planning with the planner, no? Yeah, exactly. To get everything as you... Because some, there are always some... Uh, some subjects, some points that you can know about your patient, for example, the, the, the opening or the mouth opening of your patient, and uh, how are you going to manage your surgery so you can orient the planner to do everything. Right? So basically, on the Dion Abbey full art box, what you're going to get is the surgical guide. Inside the surgical guide, you also have the pipe gift to place the provisional processes. Uh, you're going to see on the video, it's a really accurate way to, 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 to rebase the provisional processes, which makes it much better. There you have the implants, the UV active implants, six, four, or five, whatever you're going to use for the full art surgical guide with the bike uh, jig for the provisional one. Yeah. 
and all four. Thank you. Temporal with the windows. Temporal with the windows. Uh, as you know, the properties of DR are Gallucci type. So we will need to use the rebase infra, infra, infra surgery, right? So after you finish placing the implants and the place will move to the compartment, you will place the temporal cylinders and do the rebase. These multi units are the, they are not the universal multi units, they are a special type of universal designed by Bio. Uh, of course, as they say, the surgery and the long term stability is going to be much better because the stability between the purposes and these multi units, as they are longer than the regular ones, is better, right? There you have the Galucci type purposes. It has a mucosa support for the rebase at the start. Then, once it's rebased, you tap that part off and you place it on your patient, right? This is one of the most important things you received from Leo. Yeah, you will see it later on in one of the cases. I think we put all of the implants like this. But of course, this is a way, as you know, in guided surgery to do the surgery virtually. So before you get the patient uh, on your clinic, you can do the surgery of him or her and be really precise in which type of bone he has, uh, if you need to do any under prep, if you don't need to, etc. right? So everything you get from this, you can change the planning if you don't like whatever it is, you can accept it or whatever, but this is what helps you, right? If you do a planning in implant studio by yourself, this is the things you're gonna get and these are the images you're gonna need to use to be able to place your implant in the correct position, right? So you receive the box and receive all the sheets that you are going to show in the forthcoming patients, right? the yeah. patients you are going to present and also So basically, uh, the workflows for full arch are divided in two. When you use, when well, this is for a dentulous patient, right? So when you use the complete denture of the patient or when you need to use the deal wax denture, right? Uh, to use, to be able to use the complete denture, you need to have a good complete denture that you can only do a quick rebase. And after doing the rebase, uh, it's more than good to, to go with that one. I will show you the protocol with this one later. When the patient comes without a complete denture or with a complete denture that cannot be rebased because it's already too damaged, it's been too long in, in time inside the mouth of the patient and it's not anymore able to rebase it, right? So you need to use the DO wax denture, which you will see is a really good option, right? Even if the patient has a complete denture, it's a really good option to use it because it makes everything much easier, right? So the protocol for the complete denture will be to add the markers, as you can see there. After adding the markers, you do the extra oral scanning. There, as you can see, we are doing the extra oral scanning of the complete denture. As I told you, this step is really, really important. You should take your time. You should try to do it perfectly because it was gonna give the position of the gum to the DO planners, and this way they can design the guide through the inner part of this in extra oral scanner, right? So once you finish doing the 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 extra oral scanner, you can place the the prosthesis onto the onto the patient and take the CBCT mouth closed and continue with your workflow. Right here, you can see the the extra oral scanning of the complete denture finished. As I told you, you really should take your time doing this. You need to get. Uh, a file that looks something like this, right? A file that's a correct intraoral scanning, extraoral in this case, and you should be really critical with this step as you were with your regular uh, impressions, right? We remember when we took the regular impressions, we needed to look at them, be really critical with them. So nothing different with the digital ones. We need to be as critical as the, as the analog ones. Take the intraoral scanning with the mouth closed. As we'll show you later, uh, this is the occlusion, but this is the case finish. You can see the lower one, the upper one, right, which are both mixed between one and the other. So you can give that to the planner, check the, the vertical dimension, check everything. 
Planner, and send it to the planners. When you have that, you send the CPCT with that on the pictures, as we told you before, and they do the planning, right? This is the other workflow they have, which is with the wax denture and the radio pack markers. Uh, these radio pack markers are, for me, the best one of the best things these guys have because uh, you can use it for any type of guided surgery you want to do, single ones, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. complete everything, right? It, yeah. it helps you do the best fit between the CPCT and the intraoral scanning, and it gets your precision much, much higher. Even, you even when use. you have noise, no? like when you have noise on your RS, it's a nice device. Yeah. Exactly, even when you have noise with the CBCT and, and the, the best fit between these two files, CBCT and intraoral scanning is not easy. With these markers, you can do it and it makes your life easier and yeah. the planner's life easier. Yeah. So basically, here you have pictures of the wax denture. They have upper, lower, and three sizes, no? Exactly. They have mm. upper, lower, and three sizes, large, medium, and small. And the only thing you need to do is to adapt it to your patient's mouth. You will see later on how we do it. And after you have adapted the aesthetics and the vertical dimension and everything, you do a rebase with some soft putty. Also, I would recommend you to add some adhesive into the inner part of the wax denture so that the soft putty you rebase this, this wax with uh, will stay firmly there and it let you do the intra scanning or extra oral in this case, preferably, right? So you put it in hot water for, 40, for 20 seconds, hot water up to 40 degrees. Once it's already warmed up, you put it inside your patient's mouth. As I told you, you adapt it to your patient's mouth, to the vertical dimension, to everything. And then you rebase it with the, with the soft putty and you put the markers in it. And the more markers you put, of course, the easier it's gonna be for the planners to do the, the best fit, right? We normally put six, to six or seven markers, three on the palatal side, three on the vestibular side. And we take this uh, occlusion scan. As you can see, this is not the regular occlusion you can take from trios. This is done as if it was one of the lower or upper arch. That way you can get a lot more information and send it as a separate file to the planner so that they have the file of how the patient bites into his wax denture, what's the vertical dimension that you should have, and everything, right? And also you can see how the markers are appearing there perfectly so that they can do the plan, right? Once you've done that, you take the wax denture out and you do the extra oral scanning of the wax denture. As with the complete denture, uh, they're gonna use the inner part of this scan to, to design the, the guide, right? They're gonna use this as if it was a copy of how the gum of the patient is. So that way the guide will adapt better or perfectly into your into your patient's mouth i think we are missing this that it, and i think it's important to, to to say that this is a one-shot scan non-stop scan yeah, yeah, yeah. it's course. very very important it's this very, and the other one it's yeah. very important that you try to do one-shot scans right that you don't uh, stop the scan check if it was okay then go again because you know, the scanners uh, can be really precise if you use them correctly. If you don't use them correctly, then it's like an analog compression, right? If you didn't know how to take soft put impressions or whatever, um, it wasn't as accurate, right? So this is exactly the same. You need to be really precise, try to take it in one shot, try to be always at the same speed, moving the, the intra hours coming around the wax venture and everything so that you let the scanner read whatever it's saying, right? <clears throat> I think it's very important this step, no? as you mentioned before, with the complete venture of the patient, and to have everything ready, all your files should be correct. No? And then you take the yeah, CT. If you use a uh, soft putty uh, or whatever that doesn't have too much bright in it, too much brightness, you won't need to do anything to the to the soft putty after replacing it. If not, if your putty, for example, has a lot of brightness or whatever, you can use a, a little bit of powder, of baby powder, so that the scanner, you help the scanner read it. And normally, we don't need to use it with the trios in our scanning. It's a scanner yeah. that gets all the information without yeah. the user. Right? 
You never use powder. No, I never. You know, very, I think it's very accurate to your experience. Right, right. Of course, as Richard has mentioned, you need to to be skilled and uh, teach it to know how to do to scan. Also. So let me let me mention also that uh, thanks to to Dio because this is made as you have probably know under Three Shapes uh, Implant Studio software. Um, the planners from Dio can do for you more things. For example, two two pieces uh, guides or yeah, or bone reduction guide as, as this uh, situation. <clears throat> we have to remove all those teeth and, and uh, remove the bone. So yes, this is the prim uh, primary guide and a secondary guide is coming onto this one, but we need to place this one, the, the, the bone reduction guide in advance to make, uh, to make everything uh, works. So just place open, and then remove again, open the flaps, remove the bone without the guide. This is very important <clears throat> and uh, to, to remove all the bone with the, some drills. It's very important to preserve the guide because as I mentioned, this is the primary guide and the secondary guide is going to fit perfectly on top of this. So uh, this is the, the, the um, reconnection of the uh, bone reduction guide. And then with the second guide, it comes and clicks onto the initial one allowing you to, to perform your guided surgery with the I think it's very important to mention it's made under Implant Studio, but it's something more or, or more complete than Implant Studio because they can do some things that usually you, can, you cannot. And I think you are going to present your cases, no? Starting yeah. for this one, which is uh, lower, no? I think so. Yeah, in the lower full arch, you can see the, the, the bite that the guy had. It was a cross bite. The inferior teeth uh, bites in front of the super ones, right? Or the upper ones. So this way, you see, it's it's not an easy case. This was one of the intra. You can see there the intraoral pictures, the extraoral pictures for the design of the prosthesis. You can see it was a periodontal patient uh, with uh, teeth moving around. This is a really important thing also we should mention, right? When you take CBCTs or intraoral scanning with, very important, with yeah. periodontal teeth, you have to be really, really uh, careful, right? You need the patient to bite onto a stable position because as you know, with periodontal teeth, the teeth can move and you need to find a position that you can reproduce during the full workflow, right? Yeah. You can always get that same position yeah, yeah. in all your intraoral scannings and in all your CBCTs, right? Yeah. The teeth can move wherever you are doing the exactly. curious scan or the CT scan. So as you see there, we ask the patient to bite really, really strong, right? So that even if he made contact with the anterior teeth, the anterior teeth are going to move forward, but he's going to make that stable contact with the posterior teeth, right? So this should be the workflow you do with patients that have enough teeth to provide you with an stable position, with an stable vertical dimension, even though later on the planners want to change the vertical dimension, but for you to take the files, you need to have a stable vertical and occlusal position, right? I think this is the surgery of this lower case. Here you have the before and after. The pre-op panoramic view. Extractions. In this case, I decided to do all the extractions of all the teeth and only leave the two uh, molars here because this was going to be an all on four. So I decided to leave the two last molars of the, of the fourth quadrant, as you can see there, placed to pins for more guide stability. You can see how good these pins go in. They can go in uh, with, the, with the machine mechanically or you can do them manually, whatever you like. For example, in this case, even though it was a, a post-extraction, we did the guide punch and the bone fracturing. Why we did this? Because we planned, with the, with the Bionavi planners, we planned the, the implants in the interproximal bone of some of the, the cases. That way you get much better primary stability, as you all know, right? Uh, and of course, for immediate loading, one of the most important requests you need to do to yourself as a surgeon is to have great primary stability, right?
This is 100 RPM. Yeah, 100 RPM, no irrigation. In this video, we don't see how we do the irrigation, but as I told you before, you have a really long needle that you need to place inside the socket you're drilling and do the irrigation manually. Uh, I recommend you guys to, that's the profile drill. For me, this is one of the most important drills because then you're gonna always have a good insertion of your multi-unit and your traditional cylinders inside the implant, right? And it's really, really precise. You can see how they cut. This is the abutment profile drill. It's used uh, with the same, with the same uh, philosophy as the profile drill, right? Once you finish the steps, you place the two implants. The ones on the anterior area were 3.8 times 13 implants. Long and for me not that thick, right? They were thin implants. You can see there, these ones were an offset of 10.5. So you can see it's going to go up to the second mark, up to the second line. You want to do it manually so you are more precise on the height. Because as you can see, this is the one that is the, the one that's the non-stopper transport implant, right? So you here you have the three different offsets. You have the nine the 10.5 and the 12 offset. There you go, there we are at the 10.5, so we leave it there and we continue with the drilling of the posterior implants. We go with the guide punch, the bone flattering. As I told you before, for the irrigation, I recommend you guys to, to leave uh, some saline on the fridge two or three hours before the surgery, so that the saline you're gonna use uh, it's a little bit colder and it helps the bone to, to get the temperature it needs. As I told you, and you can see the burst go at 100 RPM. So of course you need to do the irrigation, but even if you didn't do it, if it the is heat not is, so, not, is yeah. not so so bad, right? It's a very clean solid array. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. This is, this is done under conscious intravenous sedation and uh, local anesthesia? Yeah, just for comfort of the patient. The patient. It's not that you need it, but for comfort of the patient. We, we yeah. normally do the full art cases under uh, sedation, right? If the patient is really calm, we just do it with a benzodiazepine. There you have the guide uh, fits of the 10.5 millimeter offset, right? in the implants on the anterior area, so it helps your, your guide to be more steady. Not that you need it in this case, but we wanted to show you how it was. In this case, you didn't need it because you already have two pins, right? But I wanted to show you guys how this works. There is the stopper one for the nine millimeters. So you're gonna see, you need to place it down until it reaches the platform of the sleeve. There you go. Very nice. I always prefer to do the last millimeter manually. Uh, not that these guides are, are easy to break, but all the guides you need to prepare for, especially when you are not on your last implant, because if the guide breaks and you still haven't placed your implants, <laughs> uh, you're going to have a, a good time trying to place the last one. Right? <laughs> so removing the guide pins? Removing the guide pins after placing the multi-unit apartments, after placing the traditional cylinders. There you go with the bite jig, is what I told you. You can see the bite jig between the upper and the lower one. So it gives you the exact position where the where the process should go. After doing the rebase and polishing up all the excess, you place the screws. Uh, I didn't mention this, but I recommend you guys to do the to place the multi-unit apartments at a 30, 35 uh, torque, right? And the screws at a 25 torque. That way you get a correct fixation between all of those. So that was the lower case. Here we're gonna go with another case. This was a B-maxillary case. First we did the upper case and then we did the lower arch. And you're gonna see first the, the upper arch, right? Those are the pre-op pictures of pre the pictures, intraoral pictures, intraoral ones. You can see there is a big bone defect in the in the upper incisors. That's why we didn't use this area to place implants even though it would be, uh, as we all know, perfect for implant placement because of the position for the full arch, but we couldn't use it in this time. We would need to do a GBR and the patient wasn't willing to go under 
uh, different surgeries, right? GBR surgery, you don't wait six months and then do the implant placement. It was a hassle and I thought we, we fixed it in a really good way. Intro RI scanning, as I told you, you need to be really creative with this. It's important that you get all the mucosa so that the guys or the planning can do the inner part of the guide really precise. In this case, for example, as you can see in the guide, I decided to, to leave one of the teeth only and place two pins. Uh, the only teeth I left was the only one that wasn't really periodontal teeth. It was a teeth that was really steady into the bone, really firm. Uh, so I wanted to use it as an extra support for the guide. Right? The bite jig that you always use for the, for the provisional prosthesis to fix it in place. This is what we told you before, right? This was what yeah. we were saying. You get all the papers with each implant, so that way you can see where the implant is going, how much distance you have to the buccal bone, how much distance you have to the nasal floor, to the sinus floor, whatever. The amount of bone you have. Here, for example, this is what I told you, right? You have a, one that needs a, a sinus elevation. Right, they calculate for you the height of the bone and the gum, as you can see here. Bone plus gum height is eight millimeter. So when you're gonna use the instrument of the sinus lift, uh, guided sinus lift, you will need to do eight plus one for the bone condenser and eight plus two for the depth gouge, so that you can uh, put the bone everywhere you want to do it. Right. can see here everything, the type of implant you have, it's a 4.11, uh, the different offsets, you can see everything. You can see if it's close to the sinus wall, uh, they give you recommendations, check the bone here, whatever, right? So it's a really good system, it helps a lot. I think uh, one of the things I, I always uh, know you, <clears throat> you mentioned to the planner is to try to use the same offset yeah. in uh, most of the drilling places, no? If it's, if it's possible, it if it's possible, I always like to use the same offset because if you don't have the same offset for different implants, uh, you will need to be checking each time what where you need to use whatever, right? But if you have the same offset for all, you can go with the same bear to all the implants, make the surgery much faster, right? Those are uh, this is an important picture we had there. Uh, it tells you the height of the multi-unit you're going to place. For example, when you're placing four, six, five implants for a full arch, uh, you're going to have different multi-unit heights depending on the gum of the patient in each area. So uh, you receive the whole package of the multi-units, and this way you can have the different heights where it goes in each implant, right? For example, here in the implant of the 16th, we're going to place a multi-unit of one millimeter in the implant of the 22, it was a four millimeter one, right? So, so for you to don't get mixed up in the intra-surgery protocol, you have this picture which makes it really easy for you to decide what, where the multi-unit goes, right? This is a drilling protocol that you receive from Leo. Of course, this is a protocol, and they always say this to you, that it's a, an approximate thing, right? You as a surgeon and with your expertise, you need to decide when to stop drilling or when to continue, if the bone is soft or if the bone is hard, if you need to do under prep or if you don't need to do under prep, right? One thing I should say, I will always use all the profile drills on this protocol. The profile drills for me are really important. Maybe I don't use all the drills um, in diameter, right? For example, if I'm gonna place an implant that's on soft bone, I will do under prep for sure, 100% sure. Uh, especially because we're doing immediate loading, uh, but of course, uh, this is something that you need to decide inside your surgery, right? As you are drilling, right? Yeah. So this is the, the provisional prosthesis. Check the midline, check everything. They send you the drilling protocol that comes out of the implant studio. They send you the surgical report. Surgical report for me is something really good because it's a way to do the surgery on your patient virtually. You can see there the type of bone you're gonna have. So this way, even before you start the surgery, you would know if you're gonna need to do under prep, if you're not gonna need to do under prep, depending on the bone. 
you can see there that there is an area where it says where the implant is gonna be in which type of bone so the more you are on the gray area the more you need to under prep the more you are into the green or yellow area the less you need to under prep right I think this is the surgery of the of the upper case of the, of the upper arch we do the extraction of all the teeth except for the one on the 14th right you can see that this guy also had a cross bite. Place the guide. Make sure with the window you have there on the 14th that the guide is placed in, in the correct position. Do a good pressure. Anchor the guide with the pins. There you go. Second one. This time I'm doing it manually so you guys can see that there is two different ways. You can do it automatically. You can do it manually. They are both correct, whatever you like. As you see here, when I place the drilling tubes, because, because it's the upper arch, I always put some some flush, some dental flush onto the tube, so in case the, the tube falls, the patient is not gonna swallow the tube, right? On the lower case, I'm more confident with that, but on the upper case, I always use the flush. You can see really how the tube works on that drilling. It's really important. <clears throat> this case, for example, it's important that you go uh, yeah. slow and that you are that you don't try to run too fast when you're gonna place the drill side, right? You always need to have contact between the 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 bear and the sleeve before you start drilling. This is a really important thing so that you get a precise drilling of your implant, right? Those are the profile drills. Final drill I think is this one. You always make a privacy drill in, in terms of length, of length no? You, you have using... to guide the surgery because if not, you're not going to be precise, right? If you try to go very with important. the long bear from the start, mm -hmm. you're That's not very important. Be precise. Yeah. Yeah, so. Your bear cannot touch the bone before your bear is touching the sleeve. Yeah. Bear and sleeve need to be in contact together before your bear touches the bone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And you start placing your implants with the UV activator? Yeah, start placing after the UV activation. That's the implant. So you are going to place it in a, a cross uh, pattern? Yeah, I think cross you are pattern, placing. exactly. So that, that way you can add the guide fix as we saw before. There you go, you have the guide fix 39. You can see really the precision you will get with the tube and the first ones. You see there, I show you always I never start drilling until the bear and the sleep are in contact. Yeah, that's very important. Never, no? <clears throat> it's the, for me, it's the most important thing in, in guide surgery. Yeah. And I noticed in this case, only one of the sleeves was a different offset. I think the one from the 16, and all, all yeah. those were at the same offset. Yeah, I can't remember right now exactly, but I think so. I noticed that. So this is progressive in length in terms of uh, getting the best accuracy of your procedure. Yeah, you first everything. have to go progressive in length and then progressive in diameter. Yeah. Then UV activator, third side. This is amazing. Yeah. Hmm? This is the best thing I think. Yeah, it's for me really it's important. really important the surface. That's the non-stopper transport implant. You have to place it at the 10.5 offset. Even though this patient has no medical condition, uh, it's very important to use this, this type of implant in the modern implantology. No? Like Anything that helps <coughs> you get a higher success rate placing implants. Yeah, I think it's more than well done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more than well done. So again, you are not showing how to remove the debris yeah. with the syringe. We didn't do it on the videos because it will make the video yeah. too long, right? Too long. This is also nice, sorry. Very clean with almost no blood, no? Also, this was performed uh, on the conscious oh. intervention sedation. It allows you to standardize the procedure, no? Yeah. You have everything in the same situation. For the patient, it's much more comfortable. So you are using, you're fixing your guide. Yeah. 
that purple one is for the 12 millimeter offset because that was a 12 millimeter. This one was um, they were different offsets. You see, that's a 12 millimeter offset. That one. Yeah, the other ones were nine because we had the blue guide fix. I think these ones are also nine. So the guide, the guides. One another. Uh, sometimes you mention me is that the, the guides from from uh, Dio are uh, really stable, no? They're and, really and stable they fit and they're perfectly. really strong. They fit perfectly. Like for me, is the best guys I've used. And like, uh, we normally do the guys ourselves. You also can see the nice contact with the yeah, with, with the, the print the model. Yeah, we also do the guides ourselves, and our guides are not bad. But then I have to say that these guides are, are on a different level, right? <laughs> so that's the drilling process for the joint yeah, area. For the starter. Profile drill, for me, what I told you, you should never try to skip this, this step. Because if you skip this step, your multi-unit apartment is not going to fit perfectly. So for me, it's really important to use the profile drill. Abutment drill. For the abutment drill, you can tear your LPMs a little bit higher. Okay, This is something I wanted to mention. Normally for the abutment drill, I turn them a little bit higher. And even though I, I sometimes use the irrigation for that one. Because as you can see, the bird doesn't uh, occupy the full sleeve. So you will get some irrigation there. That's a nine millimeter offset also placed with the offset, finished by manually. Did you make any kind of under preparation? On, on yeah, of course, I, I, you always, I always, as you can see there, I have the under prep, uh, not the under prep, sorry, I have the stopper placed. Here's another good thing you have on the Sigmus kit, you have the different stoppers, right? You can see there how automatic the pairs of the Sigmus lifts are. It's so really good. No? You go to 10 RPM. With the, with the you go to 10 RPM. So you have two things. They are really automatic and you're drilling under 10 RPM. So the the chances to break the, the Snyder membrane are really, really low. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And that's a 9 millimeter place with a stopper also. That's a very nice feature huh? of the deal. Yeah. You have the six implants placed, take off the, the pins, take off the guide, do the last extraction, place the multi units. As I told you, I would recommend you to place the multi units at a 35 to 40 of torque. This way, you have them completely firm and it's a one time abutment shape. Do the GBR wherever you need to do GBR. Place the provisional cylinders. Very nice. The guide with the with the split dam. By jig. You see that the, the prosthesis has lateral holes. This way you can fix the two or three implants by these lateral holes when the patient is writing with the prosthesis on the correct position. Then you ask him to open, you take the jig out and you finish filling them a little bit. You have to only fill a little bit each implant so that when you unscrew the provisional cylinder, the provisional cylinder comes out with the, with the prosthesis and you just finish the rebase extra value. Hmm. You make the final adaptation of the yeah. that's very nice. And also cutting edges and removing yeah, this is a good feature so that Dio has to to be able to do the rebase and don't get the, the resin inside your provisional cylinders and everything. After you finished, you screw the prosthesis. For your preference, so you have an excellent passive fit. Exactly. You, with Gallucci technique, you always have a perfectly passive fit, right? Because you, you're going to rebase exactly where the implants are. So you don't need to adapt your two base or your cylinder to the implant, but it's the other way around, right? You mm -hmm. just adapt to where the implants are. You can see the immediate results. Patient still has some anesthesia in the lip and everything. This was a panoramic we took one month later. 
uh, when we were already planning the local arch. And that's the city, no? That's the city where you can see that all same the implants, day. same day city, all the implants are placed exactly where it was um, planned, right? So this is something I, I always like to do because you can really see the accuracy of the surgery. DNAV surgery, that all your implants are exactly where you planned them. Looking always on your planner, your planners to the uh, cortical support of your implants, no? Exactly. So you use this to compare it to the to the plan. To the planning, yeah. So that's the immediate smile. Immediate smile still under anesthesia in the lip. Intraoral pictures of the immediate results. Same day, no? Same day. As you can see here, uh, this is one one or two weeks later, I can't remember. You can see there's no inflammation, no nothing. Uh, the patient was feeling really happy. Uh, he, he felt his life already changed, uh, but it was just starting to change. As you can see, for me, the aesthetic uh, wasn't really the perfect one because the teeth were a little bit shorter than they needed to be. So we talked to Bill, uh, we made a new provisional prosthesis, which is this one you can see here. They send to you the prosthesis, you rebase it as the you, you do the rebase exactly the same way you did the, with the first one. And this is the second temporary prosthesis. Yeah, this is the second temporary prosthesis. And you can see here that the change is amazing. Amazing, right? The patient felt uh, like now can, he really felt his life you, change. You can, you can see if he emphasized. Yeah, and you can see he shaved, uh, he shaved the mustache he had so that the people couldn't see his teeth and everything, right? Yeah. So the guy is starting to enjoy life. Something they can, he can be proud of. Yeah, of course. Look at her, his eyes, it's amazing. Lateral views this are is, perfect. <coughs> it's important, this is the second temporary. Yeah, second temporary, but, so you make but a it's change important from to, to see that it's so, still the temporary, right? It was, it was one month after the placement of the implants, you wait for yeah, one, one month or, or one month and a half, I think. One month and a half, but this is still temporary. Yeah, exactly, it's still the temporary. So when we finish that, we go with the lower arch, take the intra or scanning for the lower arch, with the new prosthesis in place, as you can see. Here, I want to show you this because I did a little bit of an error with, it, with this impression. You see that I should have get more mucosa on the third quadrant on the left side, which made this a little bit more difficult for the bio planners, but still they managed to do a really nice guide for me. No problem. So uh, I think this is the case they did two guides, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. For the lower arch, we, we plan to do two guides. One to place three, three implants and another one to place the other three. Uh, once we're done without any extraction, which is the first three implants, that way you get a really precise, because the guide adapts to the remaining teeth perfectly, right? You place the three implants, you take the, the guide out, you do the extractions you need for the second guide, and you place your second uh, guide placing the guide fix of the implants. That way you use the implants as if they were anchor pins. So you use two guides, <clears throat> lower on the screen is the without any kind of instruction, yeah. just to place the implants, the first one. then remove that guide and place the upper on the screen after doing the extraction. After doing the extraction. And you place the guide fix of you each implant of the ones, the three implants you have already placed. That way you can just maintain it. The, the guide fix as if they were anchor pins. Very nice. Here you have the surgery of the lower arch. That's the result, no? Yeah, immediate result. Very Here nice. You can see how the gum is, yeah, yeah, exactly. After two or three months, I think. Tissue punch, always important. For the tissue punch, I, I use the RPMs at 800, something like that, okay? I don't use the RPMs for the tissue punch at 100 because you won't do anything to the gum. You really can see, yeah, I'm in love with this drilling tips, to be honest, with the two millimeter there, right? Yeah. Because you can see how precise the first uh, drillings are, which is what gives you the position. I think this is very important, yeah. yeah. You always tell me that, because it's... Uh, you can see that the guy doesn't yeah. move at all. At all, right? yeah. 
the guy doesn't move at all. Even if you don't place your fingers in the guy in the guy to press the, the guide against the tip, right? The guide is is really nice. There you go with the profile drill. You can tell how much bone comes out of the profile drill, and that in that sense you can get a sense of how much bone you need to get out in order for your multi-unit abutment to be placed in the correct position. The surgery in drilling. Yeah. Again, yeah, always. 100 RPM, irrigation between barrels, with cold saline, activation of the DR implants. Implant placement. Uh, one thing we didn't mention before with the uh, considerations we need for immediate loading is that the, the, the insertion torque should be always around 35 to 40 uh, newton centimeter, right? Uh, for immediate loading proposal. In cases of full large, you can, uh, let's say you can have one implant uh, lower from that insertion torque and still they're going to act as if they were one unit because they are all um, all together with the prosthesis, right? The prosthesis makes them work as if they were one implant, so it adds up with the other ones. But you should always try to be careful, try to do some under prep so that you get a high insertion torque. Then you can see that's the stopper one, the one that's the nine millimeter offset. I always like to use the stopper one because it gives you a little bit more precision, right? You don't need to be able to like, you don't need to, to, to be able to see really well if your if your black line is on the platform of the leaf or it's one millimeter above or under. With the stopper, you only have one position. So whenever you have a nine millimeter offset, I recommend you guys to use the, the stopper. So you change the guide? Change the guide, place the guide fix. As you can see on okay. the posterior ones, I have the guide fix. Place the drilling tubes. You see the guide fix on the posterior ones. I still left two teeth for more support of the guide. It's most amazing how precise are those guides. Yeah. This is not easy to, to achieve, right? Eh? No. A good panning. Now uh, we think it's a given. Now in guided surgery <laughs> to have that position, right? But some years ago, really, it wasn't. It wasn't there. Also, as always, conscious intravenous sedation, local yeah. anesthesia. Local Did anesthesia. you make a block nerve here, or just? Uh, in, in well, I I had to for the extractions, but if not, I will just make infiltration. Infiltration. Right? But I have because to. because it's always it's always important to remember that filtrative anesthesia can always change something the aspect of your mucosa in terms of uh, yeah. guide support and everything. But exactly. but again, you are not pressing the, the the guide thanks to the guide fix pins yeah. screw on to the three implants. Only and supported by two teeth and two guide the, fix. The the guide is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. We go with the UV activator, activate the implants again. Once you do this for the first time, you can tell that this is uh, something that gives you the that little uh, switch you needed to get much more success. Right? You go with a nine millimeter stopper. You can see. It. We activate all of our implants. We always place the UF2. Uh, we are waiting here in Europe to get the, the UF in the version of UV activator, which I think it would be another step up on the on the DIA protocol, right? Because of the essential code? Yeah, because they are a little <coughs> bit more self tapered so it's, you don't need to do so much under that. Mm -hmm. And once you get that, it's just going to be a perfect system for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice video. UV activator, which has the uh, ability to, to, to activate your surface is uh, something it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Gives, gives you also much more uh, confidence no, on your treatment. 
So you are Martin. something we don't show also in the surgeries is that after we do the, the extractions, we always clean the socket. We spend maybe like 20 or 30 minutes cleaning the socket with peroxide water and with everything. We use everything we have on the arsenal. Like everything we, we can use to clean everything. We, use. we replace the six air provisioner cylinders, okay. place the split dam. For me, this is an important step so you don't get blood inside your flow over resin and this way you can do it and it will stay cemented for the whole period that the provision is going to stay in mouth. Here in Europe we leave the provision for at least uh, five to six months right from the, from the upper case mm -hmm. and three to four months four. from the lower yeah. case. So after learning you are yeah. Yeah. putting the screws up to 25 torque. That's very nice. Provisional placed. Occlusion, you can see that the midline is perfect, the occlusion is perfect. Uh, it's just. Uh, just an amazing case, yes, I can tell you. <laughs> it's incredible. Those both temporary prosthesis, the patient perfectly restored. That's the. Uh, same, Same images we had before, CDCT taken right after the, the surgery. You see, we, we always do this just to double check uh, if everything went as planned, right? So in case it didn't, we, we talk to the planners, try to figure out what went wrong. At the start, we haven't really need to do that because everything we have uh, done, it's gone exactly as we planned, right? So we have some extra other pictures of the patient after four and up. Four up, he's nearly crying of how he, <laughs> how happy he is, you know, after the change he's had. He shaved his, uh, his. Uh, yeah, he shaved everything, and now he's taking care of himself even more than before. Right? Yeah, it's a nice case. Congratulations. So thank you so much, thank you so much, Dio, and thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, thank you very much, Jason and Dia and Abby for inviting us for this um, early morning chat afternoon for you guys in, in Asia. So it was a pleasure here you know, talking to you, and I hope I hope you guys learn a little bit, and it wasn't too long for you guys, and you enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Uh, keep safe. Keep, keep safe. safe. Keep safe is very yeah. important. Be happy. Nowadays. Enjoy your work and uh, enjoy your life. Yeah. Thank you so much.